Hello, hello and welcome to our live event on Sigbiker channel. Here is Danny. Today I've prepared something for you. It's all about the bikes. Ta -da! And we're gonna be talking about uh, beginner's bike. Bikes. So, as I said the last time, we're gonna just maybe have five minutes of some introduction and saying hello and, and all those uh, regards and, and greetings. And then I will, I will tell you how would I spot, hello India, cyclovlogger, how would I spot a bad beginner bike, uh, maybe the road bike or the mountain bike, and then some questions from you. And after that, uh, hello, hello, uh, <laughs> hi, hi, hi Poland. After that, um, it will stay on YouTube, and I will put some links where you can just jump straight into the topic of our live event. Hello, Robert from Romania. Nice to have you here. Uh, tell me, can you hear me well? That's number one. Hi Wojtek. <laughs> Hi Wrocław. Hi Germany. Gross, gross. Portugal. Okay, we've got, we've got quite a few guys from... Okay, you can hear me well. Now, the lighting. It's like... Um, half past 10 a.m. here in Poland and I have all the lights on uh, also so it should be okay is the lighting okay can you see because I'm gonna be showing you some details on those bikes hi Francisco hi Simon Sweden cool lighting is fine thank you very much that is so cool so guys uh, yeah you can just write all those hello South Pole Oh my goodness, where are you, Northy Land? Cool. Thanks, Marcile Sox. Some of your nicknames on YouTube or, or Google Plus are just impossible to read. Finland, hello, 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 hello. Okay guys, so today we're gonna be talking about bicycles and I've got here one, two, three, four, five bikes and one frames. Uh, I can tell you right away that three of these bikes, three, would be good beginner bikes and two would be really bad beginner bikes. So if you're interested in this topic, it will be all about, all about beginner's bike uh, on this episode. Uh, okay, try to say your second name, Moreira, Francisco Moreira. Francisco Moreira. It's no problem for me to, to spell R or, or R because I do use it in my language. Bike packing and, and uh, clipless pedal pedals. Uh, yeah, I would say if, especially if you're going through some, some rougher terrains and sometimes you would pull on the low cadence, SPD might be good. Uh, but good and comfortable shoes with nice platform for long rides if you if you're not uh, if you're just maybe mainly going through the tarmac uh, I think platforms would be also very very good yesterday I, I've been cycling with a guy who's doing uh, distances like 400 kilometers 1000 kilometers 1400 kilometers and he's just riding in just regular like rebook, rebook um, shoes with the platforms and it's very comfortable for him. So I would say easy terrain, platforms maybe. Some, some technical stuff, some, some gravel, some, some uphills where you sometimes want to pull, SPD would be cool. Forks, there will be, there is upcoming episode about forks. So we're gonna be comparing different forks. I have now really good line of, of different forks. So I'm gonna be showing you those just in the future. Uh, and, and I will tell you what fork would be good for a beginner guy. Hi, Syria. Armored bikes. <laughs> cool. So, we've got five minutes. It's nice to have you all here. Uh, and now I'm gonna just, just introduce to you what I've prepared about beginner's bike. Giant Content Claris. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna be talking about that uh, today. So it, it's, it's gonna be both uh, regarding mountain bikes and road bikes. But try to guess which of these five bikes I have here would you recommend for a beginner uh, cyclist or a rider? 
and which ones would you definitely not recommend to start with? Uh, I said that I have here three bikes I would recommend for a beginner and two bikes not really good for a beginner bike uh, for a beginner uh, rider. Which ones um, these are you think? Canada Vintage for beginner, cool, very good. This is an awesome bike for a beginner. Merida, really bad for a beginner. That's that's the worst bike for a beginner from all these I have. Very good. Something more? Okay. 29er, not good for a beginner. Okay, uh, Sasha. Yeah, we're gonna be talking about 29. Could be good. Killer, very good. FSI. FSI is bad for a beginner. Canada Killer I have there on the wall is really good. Uh, Canada FSI is really bad for beginner. And finally, you may not know this bike here. This is uh, Rose uh, Count Solo, the Alloy Mountain Bike Hardtail. This one is really good for the beginner. So, how to spot a bad bike for a beginner? Number one is the price. The more pricey the bike is, the, the less I would recommend it for a beginner. Uh, you're gonna see why just in a second, but uh, just to, to, to give you some, some, some idea of, of what price would be too bad, maybe for a beginner, I would say both for the mountain bike and for a road bike, more than $1,500 may be bad for a beginner. I know I'm talking to the people who have different size of a wallet, but uh, let's say you can spend $3,000 uh, on the bike. I would not go over $1,500 for my first bike, either a road bike uh, or a mountain bike. So $1,500, in my opinion, that's the kind of sweet spot where you can do both. You can do like amateur riding and even some, some training in races, $1,500, but more, not really good. And I'm going to tell you why just in a second. If you are really on the budget, you can spend $400 on the mountain bike, you can spend just maybe over $500 on the road bike, if it's new bike, uh, it's okay. You just have to know that if you're really going to stick to cycling, uh, you will be replacing many parts on, on such such uh, cheap bike, because $500 is, is cheap. If you want to have mountain bike with a front fork, you're gonna replace many parts. So if you are on the budget, I would try to maybe save some more money and go to just around $800. So $800 for someone on the budget, I know it can sound like really a lot, uh, but $800, $800 bike would be really good, in my opinion. $1,500, awesome. More than that, not really good for beginners. Why? Number two, I have some, uh, some help just uh, on the wall. Number two, why? Because of so many things you do not know about yourself, about your body, about your riding style you're gonna choose. Alright, so if you're a beginner cyclist, uh, I would assume you may have been riding, like commuting to, to your working place or uh, just sometimes going with your family, but you still consider yourself a beginner cyclist, you don't know what kind of, let's say, mountain biking would you choose trail riding, cross-country racing, marathon racing, some Grand Fondos MTB or so, you don't know. So, coming back, coming back, coming back, coming back, okay, I am back. Cool, we are back. Great. So, if you are buying your first bike and you don't know what type of riding you're gonna choose to buy an expensive bike, because um, you just, you just have to see for yourself. Maybe you won't stick to cycling, which I doubt so much, because cycling is a great, great sport and, and I love it. And I know all the people who started, uh, I, I just told them uh, to do it, they, they do it. And many of them are better than me on races. So cycling is cool. Uh, but yeah, I tried trail riding. Trail riding isn't really for me. If you saw my review on, for example, Cannondale Trigger uh, 2018, which is an awesome bike. It was really good on the on the descents, but I didn't enjoy riding on the climbs at all. So that this is definitely not the bike for me. Uh, but for example, 
cross-country full suspension bike, I can go for races, I can go for long rides in the saddle, I can go for marathons, I love it, absolutely, I love my Merida. Uh, so you need some time to, to actually make a decision. That's why buying cheaper bike as your first one, beginner bike, uh, is just better, better option. Number three, it, it all ties up with the price of the bike and what you don't know about you. The more expensive your bicycle is, the more specialized it is. I'm not talking about the brand specialized, but about specializing the geometry of the bike uh, and the components of the bike. And let me just show you uh, some example, okay? So the bike we have right here, that's my baby. And this little baby uh, is going for some marathon with me tomorrow. I love it. But this bike, this is a carbon bike. Uh, I'm gonna talk about carbon and alloy uh, in the next and last uh, point. It costs some seven or eight thousand dollars. It is super expensive. If you say, no problem, I've got the money, don't buy it. Because this bike is extremely specialized. Number one, the geometry of the bike is pretty aggressive. Now, for myself, as a 29er bike, I would like to have my stem even lower. But if you are a beginner bike, you may start riding such a racing machine uh, and you will just experience back pain. And you will say, no, cycling is not for me. You're gonna... I've heard so many people telling, telling me, I'm too old for this. My back pains, my, my butt pains, it's all just so bad. This is not the, you know, the, the, the sport for me. It's because sometimes because you have chosen a wrong bike. This bike is extremely specialized in putting you into the aggressive position. Uh, the geometry allows you to be allow would allow you to be uh, really fast and efficient, and that's what you want to do uh, during the races. So if you're a beginner cyclist, you don't know. Maybe you're not going to be racing at all in your life. Do not buy extremely specialized um, and, and expensive bike. Now, if you start riding the bike, you will, you will see maybe you would like to have full suspension bike because it is so comfortable um, and you like just riding in some, on some easy trails. So trail bike would be fine for you. Maybe, like myself, you will, you will see that you love climbing and technical sections. Then. One, 120 or 140 millimeters of travel on the full suspension bike will be just too much for you and I would recommend 100. 100, that's the sweet spot for me, but it's for me, you know, I've tried it, I've made thousands of kilometers, so I know it. That's why I love uh, this bike, I wouldn't replace it with any other, but it, it may be really bad bike for you. Uh, most bikes, like if you, if you watch some other YouTubers, um, MTV YouTubers, you will see that 99% of them are riding different trail bikes. So more suspension, more fun, really good on the descents, on the rocks, on some technical sections, not super in climbing. Not, not nearly as good as the cross-country uh, specialized bike, alright? So the geometry on the expensive bike might, might not work for you especially if you are starting riding the bike, you need your position to be higher, more relaxed, and then you just, you know, take time to, uh, to get used to the riding, uh, riding the bike, okay? The second thing in specializing the bike is also the components. For example, this bike has extremely specialized 1x12 drivetrain. You may love it, you may not like it. Um, if I was still, let's, let's say, 16 years old, I loved riding long descents on some really long, long hours uh, um, on the saddle, in the saddle, and then one by drivetrain would not work for me at all because you can you can spin up to 48 kilometers per hour and that's it, and me and my body, my riding bodies would go very often 60, 70, 80 kilometers per hour, so we would need at least two by uh, drivetrain, so two chain rings in the front. Here is just one. So, enduro riders will love this. Most cross-country riders would love it. Uh, I don't really like it so much. So, imagine, you buy this bike, the cassette only on this bike would cost you $400, uh, 
and you need to replace the, the drive tree so that you can really write uh, in the way in the way you like. So do not buy expensive bike. It is really bad idea for a beginner. Road bikes. I'm going to show you a road bike and then uh, the example of a good beginner's bike. You said that this this vintage Canada would be a good bike for a beginner. It would be an awesome bike for a beginner because I'm going to spend four hundred dollars, actually three hundred seventy-five dollars, uh, just for replacing the parts that, that that need to be replaced. As you can see, the head tube here is pretty high. That means it is not super aggressive position on the bike. So you can just start riding the bike, and then you will see. All right, I can I can go lower. I would like to go more aero. You have spent four hundred dollars on the bike. You can resell it or just hang it on the wall as a vintage classic uh, machine and buy like Rosex Xeon. I was just uh, testing uh, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, or four, uh, and it was lovely aero machine. I loved it. So don't spend too much uh, money on the bike. Used bike is really good choice, uh, but if you're starting just with road biking, eight hundred dollars is Super awesome. You're gonna you're gonna have bike on Sora, maybe some Tiagra components, maybe some Claris. But if you if you uh, find some nice deal, uh, eight hundred dollars for a beginner's road road bike, awesome. You're gonna go for Grand Fondo. You can go for some Criterium to see how the racing looks like. You can do all the intervals you need on the road on such a bike. And the drivetrain two by ten on such a bike will be just enough. Two by nine is also good. So that's it. And now the more money you spend on the bike, the more specialized it will be also on the road bike. So it will be different geometry. It will be either light climbing bike or aero, fast aero bike, but then stiff and not comfortable, which is very crucial for beginner bike. You need a comfortable bike once more, not to feel like you are too old for this, right? So the endurance bikes would be probably the best choice for a beginner um, a road cyclist. So endurance bike because it will be comfy, it will have a bit uh, larger tires, wider tires, and it will it will just give you the position at the beginning of your riding and training that 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 you're not you're not going to be suffering so much through. All right, so. There was a mountain bike I don't recommend for a beginner, road bike I do recommend. Now we have road bike I do recommend for a beginner. This bike, price, it's around thirteen or fourteen hundred dollars. Uh, you can race on this bike and be really good. The weight is 12 kilos, uh, you have some Shimano SLX components, but I assume it doesn't matter so much for a beginner. What's important here is this. This is alloy, and that's the last thing I'm gonna. <laughs> I'd like to talk uh, with you about. Alloy bikes are the perfect uh, beginner bikes. Alloy bikes are much cheaper. Yes, I'm. I'm really gonna stick to what I said in my previous episode. It is more durable uh, material than the carbon. Yes, it is. And three, these are much easier in terms of the maintenance. Uh, when you buy a carbon bike, you have no idea uh, in how many places you can ruin your frame set if you don't have a torque wrench, right? So not using a torque wrench. Where is my torque wrench? Uh, where is my torque wrench? Oh, it's in the box. It's in the box. I'm not going to show you. But anyway, uh, you need to know exactly how much torque you can use for, for example, the, the seat post clamp or uh, for mounting any parts um, on, on your frame, on, onto your frame and also the crucial place is the, uh, the steering tube and your stem and the, the, the bars, if these are carbon uh, handlebars. So I know many people who just bought the bike a carbon bike in the store, everything was just tuned up for them, and they they, they went for some for some traveling. So they they wanted to put the bike into the car and drive somewhere to the Alps or somewhere to the in, into the mountains. So they had to unscrew the seat post clamp in order to lower it or remove it, and then when they 
came, you know, to, to the place where they wanted to, to, to write, they would install the seat post and overtight overtight the, uh, the screw. You can also uh, do, do it too, with too low torque and your frame may crack. And if your frame cracks, you are, you are done with the frame. So no carbon bike for a beginner. Really, no. Some myths. Carbon bikes won't feel more comfortable, especially for a beginner. Carbon bikes won't make you faster. You, you're not gonna notice the difference between alloy and, and carbon. If I was going to do blind test on road bikes, sometimes I would feel little difference. On mountain bikes, where we have white tires and suspension, I don't feel any difference between alloy and carbon. Carbon is lighter, carbon is for those who are racing and have the money or sponsor, but not for a beginner bike. All right? So, just to sum up, the price. Don't buy pricey bikes because, because they may not fit you and they will take a lot of uh, money. So, more than $1,500, in my opinion, is just too much for, for a beginner's bike. Okay? Second, what was the second? The things you don't know about yourself. So, you don't know uh, what will be the perfect body position for you. How are you gonna you know, last for, for how many hours you're gonna feel comfortable with your back, with your butt and so. You don't know what will be the type of riding uh, that will fit the best. You need some time to actually see how it's going, how it's working for you. Maybe you're gonna, you're gonna be racing cross country like, like I love uh, doing. Maybe you don't, maybe you won't. So you need to start with some cheaper bike and find out what's, what's uh, working for you. Three. The more the, uh, expensive bike, the more specialized it is, the more, the more it goes into just one direction, like cross-country racing, it is way too hard for a beginner bike, it is dangerous, enduro, downhill, or uh, from among the road bikes, triathlon bikes, uh, time trial bikes are just not for you, so, so just, just know about that. And finally, carbon. Carbon is not the best material for the beginner's uh, bike. I would really recommend starting with alloy. Uh, and uh, I would probably become a bike shop owner as well. And I would not put beginner uh, cyclists on the carbon. I would tell them buy alloy. So that's what I wanted to tell you. If you want me to show you some details or you have some more questions in this matter, just let me know. I'm going to look at your comments right now. Uh, and what do you think about this? So guys, any questions? Uh, there was there was many comments while I was I was talking. Okay, hi hi. What a difference between what? What's up? What's up? Good stream. Hi hi hi. Cool cool cool. You don't have any questions. That's good. That is good. Okay, also. Um, the rose um, I showed you, it has the alloy frame, carbon wheel sets. Oh, carbon wheel sets. Hmm. The question is, do you do you need carbon wheel sets? I have carbon wheels uh, on the FSI, and it is a lovely hardtail, a cross country hardtail, and these are quite durable. I've I've done some 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 really serious races uh, on those. Super straight, no problems, really good to seal, uh, I have tubeless uh, tires there, so really good ones. The question is, do you need those? The bike will be considerably lighter with the wheels, with the carbon wheels, but will it be faster? Not really. Tiagra, really good components. Uh, I, had, I had bikes on Tiagra, I had bikes on Sora, and these were really good. Fuji Roubaix used for beginner road bike. Fuji Roubaix really good bike. I I did recommend it for for uh, many guys. D uh, yeah, uh, the wheel, the wheel size. One more thing, the wheel size. Twenty nine er. If you're gonna buy an expensive mountain bike, ninety percent of those bikes are twenty nine ers. There are also some options for twenty seven point five inch inch wheels, but some brands like Cannondale even don't have it. Uh, only on those uh, super small uh, sizes or for Asia. I, I've spotted FSI large size in Asia comes with 27.5. I was really thinking about getting one for me. But 29ers for beginners are not always good. I've seen many riders, men and women, going with the new 29er bike. 
to some single tracks with many switchbacks and I saw them just getting off the bike in order to take the turn because 29er just felt so long and you know not really nimble I would really say 26er especially for women beginners bike will be the best mountain bike 20 not 27.5 26 inch uh, wheels I still have 26er that's the killer uh, and you will see me this year on some serious races. Very good bike. So 26er, especially for women, beginner's bike, it might be the best. All right. So guys, if that's pretty much all, okay, the, the bike behind the Fuji has Shimano 105. Shimano 105 is really good components. I didn't maybe love the way they, they were changing the gears on my Cat 10 bike. But the cable routing wasn't really good on that bike. Cinelli Tipo Pista. Well, I don't know that one. Specialized Roubaix. Recommend. Good bike. Ah, uh, you're in love with this one. Yeah, I, I'm in love with, the, with this one as well. Light frame. Extremely durable. Very durable frame. Uh, it already has 20 years and it will still go for like tens of thousands of kilometers. So really lovely bike. Uh, I think I'm gonna get all the Campagnolo parts within two, three uh, years, so uh, three uh, weeks, so it's gonna be ready. Canada CAD 8, I absolutely recommend. CAD 8 on Claris is amazing uh, beginner's bike. You can replace Claris in the future with, let's say, some 2x10, 2x11 system, drivetrain, and you can go for races. And then you don't, you don't really need anything better than that. CAD 8 is a really good bike. Orbia, I, uh, Orbia I, I haven't been riding Orbia. Maybe somewhere on the, on the demo days, but not too much, not too much. Servile, really good bikes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you say Cervelos, what, what, what was it? S5, too aggressive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think on Cervelo, when you get a new bike, you still have this, this uh, steering tube longer than you really need. I mean, if you don't cut it, it should be pretty upright. I think so. Mm, do you need... On beginner bike, no, you don't need no, 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 you don't need one by twelve. No, this bike here, uh, this is SLX components. So like it's like in the middle of Shimano's range uh, of the group sets. It has two chainrings in the front. Come closer. Okay. This bike has two chainrings in the front and eleven in the rear. I would say two by ten is. Awesome, 2 by 11 is even more than you need. So just, you know, finding the right the sizes of those chain, ring, uh, those chain rings for you. You can, you can climb the steepest hills in the world and you can ride pretty fast down the hill as well. So 50 km per hour won't be any problem for you on, on such, such setup. So 2 by 10, 2 by... On, the, on those budget bikes you're gonna still have 3 by 8, 3 by 9. Yeah, 3x10 is, yeah, very good. Uh, <laughs> you know, usually I'm trying just to ignore people. Yeah, I don't have any, I don't have any admin on this, uh, on this live event. Uh, let me see, what can I do? But I have laptop today for the first time. Okay, this is my live. Live control room. Okay. <laughs> what can I do? I don't see chat. You know, guys, I need to learn that. So, sorry. I need to learn that more. Uh, in phone uh, settings. Yeah, I don't see the chat here. Yeah. Usually ignoring is the best way because um, if someone is writing too many comments, YouTube will just block uh, the person, at least for, for some time. I don't know for, for how long, but it's like that. Why don't I see strange? I don't see any chat here. 
So that's weird. I cannot ma manage my own, uh, my own live stream. Anyway, sorry. I'm I'm gonna learn that. And you know, and my friend who's who's working for me uh, here on the YouTube channel. It's Saturday, so he's he has day off. <laughs> he's not working today. Okay. Mountain bike seat on a road bike. Uh, it it has. I see no difference between mountain bike um, saddle and road bike saddle. I mean, there are differences if you buy the bike. But for me, I just found my own best shape of the bike and I would love to have it on both bikes. It is this one here. This, this is a couple of years old. Selle uh, San Marco with the cutout. I'm only using the cutouts. Uh, and both riding, uh, cross-country, marathon, MTB, or road biking on that saddle is just the best for me. So I wouldn't say road type saddle or mountain bike saddle, just my butt type saddle. Uh, of course, for riding on the uh, aero extensions, you need different saddle and different setup uh, on, on your saddle. That's what I change when I, when I go for long rides uh, on aero, with aero extensions. Okay, guys. So that would be that would be it. I'm gonna I'm gonna just mark this part of our life as the main main thing. Okay, I'm back. I think I'm back. So I'm gonna mark just in the description of this video like that this part was was actually the the title of the bike. So how to spot the bad beginner's bike. If you have some more questions, I I'm gonna hang out with you longer. What do you think about oval cranks? Um, <laughs> I've ridden over cranks just a couple of times in my life, but I want to try those both on road bike and mountain bike, but can't tell more. Okay, on my last... Oh, you know, sometimes these comments just disappear. You were mentioning on your last video that Reba is only one for MTB. It's good too. Yeah, Reba and these around $500 RockShox uh, um, forks are very good. Not Reba, you can you can be racing on Reba, no problem. It's pretty light, easy to maintain, it's a good bike. What do you think about e-bikes? Um, I've made an episode about misconceptions uh, on e-bikes, and I love e-bikes. Uh, I got myself uh, from Marine, it, was, it is a Pine Mountain, uh, with the electric motor, and I love it. So if I, if I want to do uh, some preview of some course, some racing course, um, I just take my e-bike. I can do like as many laps as I want with no, no problem. 3x8 is good, yes. I was racing, I was racing for two years uh, and I was pretty good as I was 12 and 13 years old on 3x6. Uh, and I was one of the best climbers back then so so the components don't matter so much of course i wouldn't be riding uh, hi matthew <laughs> i wouldn't be riding uh, now three by system but two by that's something i would like to have um sram xx two by ten that's something i'm i'm really i would really want to to have on my merida on the fsi as well but the fsi probably will be sold all right so that's it. Thanks so much for, you know, sometimes there are coming like 10 comments in a row. Sometimes it's, it's nothing. I'm not running out of space because this one will be ready in three weeks and it will be sold. This one comes, uh, came only for testing, so it goes back in a week. Killer is there and it stays. Uh, FSI is for sale, so actually the Merida will stay with me. And in, in August, there is uh, an aero road bike coming to me, to the studio. It, it will stay with me. Greetings from Germany. Gruß. How much did I sell? Um, I bought it for, uh, for $75. Uh, I'm going to spend... Altogether, I'm going to spend $375 and I, I'm thinking about making maybe $100 on it. So maybe $475 I would sell it for. <laughs> Hi Kenneth. Ja, ich spreche Deutsch ein bisschen. 
Ich habe Deutsch gelernt, aber habe auch so viel äh, for, for, forgotten. <laughs> Alright, so now there is no comments and there will be like 20 comments coming in one second. Ever tried molten? No, don't know molten. Crankshaft, the Tiagra to Altigra. Um, upgrading Cranksend from Tiagra to Altigra. Altigra will be lighter, maybe a bit stiffer. Those chain rings are different on Altigra. Yeah, this, this older uh, Altigra are just cool. Fitness bikes, uh, probably yes, but don't have just that much time. Bicicleta? Bicicleta? Bicicleta, I think you say, right? In, in Italy. Bicicleta. 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 Alright. The next project after Vintage is uh, Cannondale Raven. I already got... I found these tires. If you remember those years 1997-1998 IRC Mythos XC and I was I was happy to find almost unused it is it is uh, just dirty but it's almost unused it was maybe like 20 kilometers uh, ridden uh, because that Raven I, I already bought in Germany uh, has some different tires but it will just be with on the original tires Canada hi hi Mustafa, what was your question? I, I haven't seen your question. Oh, don't say that, Mustafa. Just ask your question. <clears throat> Favorite MTB tire? Uh, two. Um, Racing Ralph, the newest, not the older generation. Uh, Schwalbe Racing Ralph. Love it. And second, uh, Maxis Crossmark. These are my two favorites. Now I have Maxis, uh, Maxis Icon on the Merida, I don't like it. Uh, maybe it's good on the hard pack, I don't know. Uh, I felt amazing on the cross mark and racing rough uh, on the hard pack as well, but in the terrain, uh, I'm losing track. I, I feel losing traction on Icon. Focus Bolt, Focus Bolt, I don't know that model. Cube, aim, good bikes. <laughs> yeah. La Montana, you have to you have to watch because we already we already covered that topic. You you will have to rewatch it. Mustafa, you write thank you, but what was your question? Dream bike, I have dream bike. FSI was my dream bike, and ninety six was my dream bike. I have third one, Scavel. I would love to have Scavel as well. There is. Very much. Okay, Mustafa, very much. Um, Duranos. Good tires. Pretty durable. What I wanted to say. Yeah, yeah, we, we've, we've covered that topic already. So there is always like um, just five minutes when we just say hello to each other. Then the main, main part of our uh, topic and then just at, at the end we can just hang out. I can, I can answer some, some more questions. On the scalpel, there's one thing I don't like, it's the, how it looks like. Because of this uh, main tube on the scalpel that doesn't go like straight to the bottom bracket. For example, here on the Merida, if you look at this one. Ah, I have to show you my baby. Okay, see Merida? It has pretty large uh, head tube area or head, tube bo head box. And then it goes straight to the bottom bracket. On the scalpel, the, the main tube goes down and then makes this curve, it doesn't look so aggressive to me. But on the scalpel you have two bottle cages, Merida has just one. So I can only fit one bottle cage here and there is no uh, bottle cage mount even under uh, the, the main tube. So if I need something more for the marathon, that's the camelback or the, the second one on the seat post. Okay, let me just... Put it here. <clears throat> cool, come closer. <sighs> okay, 
carbon road wheels which cost about $600. Uh, my buddy Wojtek, and he's, I think he's watching, he was here, uh, Wojtek from Lubin, he bought some Chinese or Taiwanese uh, carbon uh, aero wheels, uh, even two tubulars, for $500 and it was just amazing. Yeah, you are there, Wojtek, so you can, you can tell. <laughs> $500 for the wheel set, carbon wheel set, tubulars, very good, uh, very good wheels. Find it about it. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. KCNC really worth. Uh, okay, I know one thing that is not worth. Do not buy KCNC cassette, titanium cassette. Um, because I was told uh, they just they just uh, break. So do not buy KCNC cassette. I have KCNC handlebar, I love it, alloy bar, super light, I have KCNC uh, bar ends, really good ones, but for a road bike, uh, yeah, you can, you can buy those pulleys to the derailleur, but it not, not so much uh, weight saving, savings. I don't know about crank set, but do not buy the cassette, it is not a good one. All right. Guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me, it was so cool. Where do you get those Canada catalogs? Uh, I just buy them, uh, I buy them. You can buy catalogs on eBay or just on some, some, some websites where people uh, want to, to sell stuff. So I have most of the Canada catalogs and it's lovely. Also, there is this website vintagecannondale.com, you probably know it. There is all the PDF files there. Uh, lovely website. Really like it. Uh, yeah, I've been I've been just following that website for years, like a lot of years. Thank you so much. So you know how to spot a bad beginner's bike. Those who came late, uh, <laughs> thanks for for coming. And you can just watch within a couple of minutes. The the whole episode will be there. And I'm gonna put some short links so that you know all the points, and you can just go straight to to. Uh, to what you know. Last question, mechanic or hydraulic for touring? My choice, mechanic by far, and that would be TRP Spire. TRP Spire, the best mechanic uh, brakes. I would love to have those on any of my bikes. Thanks so much, and I'm gonna see you probably not tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm racing, but Monday, Tuesday, there will be some, uh, some um, race episode with my comments, and then I'm gonna show you also my take on let's say five or ten best beginner road bikes and mountain bikes so that should be mount, uh, monday or tuesday thank you so much and i'm gonna see you soon wish me luck tomorrow 25 kilometers so it will be short one i'm gonna i'm gonna uh, record everything and we're gonna see how my full suspension bike uh, will will work see ya see ya mustafa bye bye <laughs>